Nearly 50 million Americans come down with food poisoning every year. Over 100,000 are hospitalized, and thousands die every year just because of something they ate. If they had ordered something different, or chose something else at the grocery store, they or their loved one would be alive today. But in the vast majority of cases, food poisoning manifests as little more than a case of you know, quote-unquote stomach flu, a few days of pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and then it's gone. So what's the big deal? Well, as described in the recent uh, editorial in the American Journal of Gastroenterology, in many cases that acute infection can trigger a chronic post-infectious functional gastrointestinal disorder that can last for years or even forever, the two most common of which are irritable bowel syndrome and functional dyspepsia, which means chronic indigestion. Up to 10% of people stricken with salmonella or E. coli or campylobacter are left with irritable bowel syndrome. The thought is that the transitory inflammation during the infection could lead to subtle but permanent changes in the structure and function of the digestive system, causing the lining of the gut to become hypersensitized. How do they determine if someone's rectum is hypersensitive, though? Innovative Japanese researchers developed a device to deliver repetitive rectal painful distension, basically a half-court balloon hooked up to a fancy bicycle pump that was lubricated with olive oil, inserted, and inflated until they couldn't stand the pain anymore. And those with irritable bowel had significantly lower pain threshold, significantly less quote-unquote rectal compliance. Healthy people felt the pain where you'd expect to feel the pain with effectively a balloon animal in your behind, but many with IBS also experienced abdominal pain with the same procedure, indicating a hypersensitivity of the entire gut wall. Well, if that's the problem, how can we desensitize the gut? Well, we learned in the cluster headache story about the ability of hot pepper compounds to deplete pain fibers of substance P, a neurotransmitter the body uses to transmit pain. It's bad enough to have to rub hot peppers up your nose. Where do you have to stick them for irritable bowel? Thankfully, researchers chose the oral route. Conclusions. The results of this preliminary study indicate that the chronic administration of red pepper powder in IBS patients with enteric-coated pills was significantly more effective than placebo in decreasing the intensity of abdominal pain and bloating, and was considered by the patients more effective than placebo, uh, suggesting a novel way of dealing with this frequent and distressing functional disease though after the 48 million cases of annual food poisoning, 10% may end up with IBS, even more may end up with chronic dyspepsia, uh, chronic indigestion. How do peppers work against that? Well, can't use whole peppers, because then you couldn't double-blind a fake placebo pepper. Uh, but if you give capsules of red pepper powder to folks suffering from chronic indigestion, about one and a half teaspoons a day worth, and compared to placebo, within a month their overall symptoms dropped, including their stomach pain and bloated feelings, less nausea too. The frequently prescribed drug Propulsid worked almost as good as the red pepper powder, and was considered generally well tolerated. That is, until it killed you. Propulsid was pulled from the market after causing dozens of deaths.